chapter 9. The four types or styles or rules of questionings you should ask. There are four fundamental rules or types of questions. You've got the open-ended, clarifying, probing, and reflecting. And all four of these serve a distinct purpose in the process of communication. In general, open-ended questions promote the exploration of a client's overall goals. The clarifying question ensures understanding of a client's motivations or their desires. Probing questions uncover the depth of a client's desires and needs, and while the reflective question encourages the client to think more about the answers from a previous discussion. The skillful use of these questions can enhance the communication process and promote meaningful dialogue and facilitate a deeper understanding between you and your client with respect to whatever conversation you're having. So let's talk about each one a little more in depth. The open-ended question. In general, open-ended questions encourage a detailed and expansive response. This allows the respondent to provide more information and share their thoughts. These questions typically start with the words like what, or how, or why. Open-ended questions are effective in various contexts, including interviews, counseling sessions, and discussions. They promote exploration and invite different perspectives to a topic. When it comes to the real estate, open-ended questions are crucial in the transaction because they allow you to get a better understanding of your buyer or seller's preferences, their priorities, their expectations, and things of that nature. This information that you gain through these open-ended questions are going to allow you to t customize or tailor their property search or their marketing strategy if you're with the seller to align better with these individual specific unique requirements. So I've got some examples. If you're working with the buyer, you might ask, what are your priorities for searching for a new home? What's your area? What's your size? You know, bedroom configuration. Another question is, how do you envision your ideal living space? And they're then going to tell you what they think. If you're working with a seller, what features of the, your property stand out the most? That's going to help your marketing. How would you describe your target buyer? These are questions that you could ask in that open forum type that's going to give you a better insight to the overall flow of the deal. Now, when it comes to clarifying questions, in general, they are designed to seek additional information or clear up any confusion between the parties. They're essential for ensuring a mutual understanding between you and your client. These questions are often used to confirm details or verify understanding or resolve any confusion between you and them. In a real estate transaction, clarifying questions help ensure that both parties have a clear understanding of the expectation, the client's preferences, and any special conditions that might apply to this unique deal. This is going to lead to uh, the prevention of misunderstanding. It's going to make the transaction a hell of a lot smoother, all right? So if you're working with buyers, some examples could be, can you provide a more specific, detailed discussion of your neighborhood you're interested in? Are there any specific features or amenities that you are interested in? Are there any that are non-negotiable, like you must have? If you're dealing with the seller, you could ask, is there a particular timeline or urgency for selling your property? Are there any specific requirements for your potential buyers? Once again, like cash buyer, or I can't accept an FHA loan because of the property. So these are great examples of clarifying questions to get further details 
to something you don't understand, something that has not been made clear, and issues like that. The third type of question, or the third rule, are the probing questions. In general, probing questions dive deeper into a particular topic or a subject. They encourage the client to explore their thoughts and their feelings a little more thoroughly. These questions aim to uncover underlying issues or gain a more comprehensive understanding of the situation that your particular client's in. Probing questions can be used to analyze their motivations, their perspectives, or their reasons. Probing questions in the real estate transaction aim to uncover a deeper insight into the buyer or seller's motivation, helping you provide a more targeted advice and guidance. The depth of understanding can contribute more to an informed decision-making process. So, once again, for buyers, what motivated your decision to buy a property now? Can you elaborate on any concerns or hesitations you have about the current market or about your financial condition? Things like that. That helps go deeper. For the sellers, you might ask the same questions, only in reverse. What factors influenced your decision to sell now? Have you lost a job? Are you getting divorced? Is it moving up in houses? Is it moving down? Are there any challenges that you would anticipate in this process? These are great questions to further probe some of the answers they've already given you to help clarify. The fourth question, and obviously I think these are the hardest questions. In general, a reflective question prompts an individual to think a little bit more about their experiences, their feelings, their beliefs, things of that nature. These questions encourage self-reflection and can be particularly useful in the counseling area. So they often begin with phrases like, how do you feel about, or what did you learn from? So in the real estate world, these reflective questions encourage the buyer or the seller to consider their values or past experiences or their emotions related to this real estate transaction. Once again, these types of questions can provoke a more thought process and ultimately make a better overall experience. So for a buyer, you might ask them, how do you envision your lifestyle to be in this new home? What have you learned from the previous experiences where you bought a home? Is there something we need to avoid? When you're dealing with sellers, questions would be, what aspects do you value the most about this house? Was it a great family house? Was it a great place to keep your stuff? Um, how do you feel about parting with this property? Are there going to be emotional issues associated? I remember years ago, I had a deal. Uh, I was the listing agent. We were like two days from closing and the seller called me, uh, a single mom and said, hey, I can't sell this house. So I went over to talk to her and it was all about the emotion of her boy who was now 16 or 17 as had spent his entire childhood in that house and she had the little height markings on the frame where he was you know two years old four years old you all guys know what i mean and it was just an emotional issue that she couldn't sell the memories of this house that was the problem and those can all be found out sooner if you would ask reflective questions now let me give you some last additional tips three or four additional tips Empathetic listening, we've talked about this before, pay close attention to the responses because when you pay attention, it demonstrates empathy. This involves not only hearing what they said, but listening to the emotions, listening to the context. It helps you connect on a deeper level and therefore you will be able to respond in a better method, thus ensuring that your clients feel more close to you. Avoid leading questions. Be mindful not to unintentionally lead a person to, to an answer, all right? Leading questions assume a certain preference can be off-putting to your client. They may, may make your client feel pressured or misunderstood, and that could ultimately lead to a bad outcome for you guys. 
the timing and the pace of your questions. Consider the timing. Don't rapid fire questions. Why are you moving? Where are you going? Why don't you like this? How are you doing this? What? Because that once again is going to be off putting and is going to hinder the relationship that you're trying to build between you and your client. And lastly, the last thing is nonverbal cues. Pay attention to the nonverbal cues of body language and facial expressions. These can say a whole bunch of stuff about it, the way a client is answering a question. All right. I mean, you may hear one thing and see another. Sure, we'd love to sell. And then notice that their arms are crossed and folded and have a scowl on their face. Negative nonverbal cues can make your clients feel undervalued and rushed. Make sure you don't do it either. It's crucial for you to maintain a positive and engaged attitude to help gain that sense of trust between you and your client. So by applying these four types of questions, you can enhance this entire process and get a better full, better full? <laughs> I don't even think that's a word. Get a better or more meaningful understanding between you and the client.